What's up, y'all? I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This is your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before I get going on today's video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, share the video, and turn on your notification bell. Everything I just asked you to do is free. When you do that, all you're doing is putting your seatbelt on when you hop in my car, bro. You came through and you riding in the car with me, checking out the video, just put your seatbelt on by smashing that like button and subscribing and turning on that notification bell. And also, if you want to have me hop on the panel, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. But without further ado, let's get it popping and let's get into today's video. And we got to recap the fights from yesterday, bro. We got to recap the fights we picked and talk about it all, bro. But before I do the live show this Wednesday, two days from now, bro, September the 1st, you got knocked the F out. We up to episode number 8, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.30 on the West Coast, 8.30 on the East Coast. Be sure to come out and hang out with your boy for a very fun night of boxing talk. Now, back to the video. Back to the video. Recapping the fights from yesterday from the Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley fight card. We didn't do the Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley fight. Quickly, just to explain that. No disrespect to those guys. Get your bread, get your paper. Salute to you for, you know, coming in and stepping in and for my entertainment and boxing. But we only want to do boxers that I feel like are really in the grind, really trying to go be world champions, and really trying to, to, to make their way in this sport. Now, Jake Paul continue to get serious, start fighting real boxers. I don't mind doing no Jake Paul prediction videos, but we did not predict that fight. We predicted every other fight on the card, though, and guess what, bro? Guess what? We got them all right again for the second week in a row, bro. We kind of on a roll right now. I told y'all the goal is to get to 100 right before we miss another one, bro. And right now, we are 92 and 18, bro. We got 92 right on this channel, and we got 18 wrong. And we got all five of our predictions right last night. So let's talk about them um, and, and, and kind of talk about how each fighter performed and what we want to see next. So first, Charles Conwell. I was disappointed this one was not televised, so I didn't get to see the fight live, but he won by third round TKO, did his thing. By all accounts, um, I do have a homie L-Dub who was able to see the fight and watch the fight, and he says Charles Conwell put on, just like we thought he would, you know, pressure, landing combinations, landing that wheel on Juan Carlos Rubio, just like we thought he would, and he stopped him in the third round TKO, and we predicted that he would knock him out early. Just because Juan Carlos Rubio hasn't fought the competition level of Charles Conwell. And when you watch both of them fight on the film that they both do have available, Conwell's just faster, stronger, um, more skilled, more powerful. He and it, and it all showed in that fight, obviously, with him knocking out Rubio in the third round. Moving on to the portion of the card that was televised, um, Tommy Fury, bro. Tommy Fury fought well enough to beat Anthony Taylor, but he got a lot of work to do if he really want to be in this boxing shit. Look, man. He very robotic. He looked like a fighter when you look at him. Like, damn, he big, he strong, he cut up, look like he can fight. But he 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 can't fight yet, bro. And, you know, I'm not going to knock him too much. Only like 9 to 10 amateur fights. It's only his seventh professional fight. But they're moving him correctly because he is not ready to challenge people that really can handle themselves in that ring like that. He's very robotic. Everything he does is the same jab, jab, right hand, might try to throw a left hook. And his steps are the same. He don't have a good understanding of distance. So he smothered his punches a lot um, against Anthony Taylor. He just happened to be in there with somebody that was so bad that he was able to win a unanimous decision. So salute to him for getting another victory. But he needed to get back in the lab, put his lab coat on, so to speak, and continue to work on this craft. Um, next one I want to do, Daniel Dubois versus um, Joe Cusimano. Daniel Dubois by knockout in the first round. Um, as I said, man, Joe Cusimano hadn't fought the requisite competition to be able to beat up Daniel Dubois and be able to handle what he was bringing. I did say he had a puncher's chance. Once I saw him caught, he did catch Daniel Dubois early in that first round with a right hand that Daniel Dubois just ate. He ate it and walked straight through it. And then when Daniel Dubois landed on him, he couldn't handle it. Ended up getting his ass stopped in the first round. I do want to say this because people, you know, Daniel Dubois has been knocked out in his career before. But let me say this. He got a chin, bro. He got a chin. He was stopped by Joe Joyce mainly because of his eye and an accumulation of a jab that he still can't get out the way of. So he still needs to go back in the lab, put his lab coat on and work. You know, do the work so he can continue to get better. But he takes shots well, bro. He takes shots well and he's able to, he's able to take shots well now. The heart is in question because I felt like 
Maybe he should have tried to continue against Joe Joyce. It was highly competitive. It was more than halfway through the fight unless he just absolutely couldn't see or his shit was broke or something. But in terms of can he take the punishment, can he take punches, he's proven that he can take punches at the heavyweight level, which is part of the, part of the staying power and part of being able to be successful because those guys up there, obviously their size, their strength, they hit very hard. So it's on to the next for him. He got the big W just like we expected he would. And now we on to the main two. We on to the main two. Amanda Serrano is who I want to talk about first. Amanda Serrano showed that, you know, if you ain't got her number one or number two on the women's pound for pound list, I would question, you know, how you view boxing in general, but specifically how you view women's boxing. You know, between her and Clarissa Shields, man, she's a seven division champion. Um, Clarissa Shields has been undisputed in two separate weight classes, so I would still give her the nod. But Amanda Serrano, man, the the power, the ability to just beat women up. She beat up Yamalith Mercado last night, and we got to give Yamalith Mercado a huge salute, a huge sign of respect for that Mexican warrior because she did not quit. She did not give up. She kept punching all the way to the end, but she got beat up last night, and you can see it all on her face with the left side of her face scratch her big eye swollen shut right there, but she kept fighting, kept pushing through, and Amanda Serrano, you can see when she fight, bro, she coming in there to kill you, and I mean this in the highest highest compliment possible. She an absolute dog in that ring. She coming to knock people head off, knock your body, you know, knock your lungs out your body. She can fight, fight, bro, and I can see why these women at the featherweight division ain't trying to fight her, bro. People turning down career high paydays to get away from Amanda Serrano, you know, and that's not, that's not a good look, man. Women, if women's boxing is going to be what it need to be, we already got enough of the men not fighting each other, not unifying divisions. We all got to sit up here and speculate who we think the best is in most divisions. You know, 168 right now, we about to get to find out. That's being undisputed. 154, we know Castano and Jamel Charlo, the cream of the crop. They need to run it back so they can see who can get a clear victory in that one. Um, down at 115 pounds, we've got Estrada, um, you know, unifying with Chocolatito. Um, at 122 pounds, I believe, or is it 118? Anyway, we're St Stephen Fulton. Um, and Brandon Figueroa about to get it on. So it's some good stuff happening, but, you know, lightweight, um, nothing. 140, Josh Taylor did his thing, cleaned out that division, so he the man there. 147, we ain't getting nothing. You know, we ain't got no no unifications or nothing like that. We need to keep that going. Um, you know, we need Spence to come back healthy, fight, you know, either Ugas or, or, or Terrence Crawford. I prefer Terrence Crawford. But um, either one of those fights, I wouldn't be mad at it. Give me Terrence Crawford. Ooh, got something, bro, to unify that division. 160, they ain't unifying. 175, they need to unify. You know, heavyweight, they need to unify. It's just a lot of fuckery in the game. So when you have some, you know, men's boxing that's like that, and it's more popular than women's boxing, on the women's side for Amanda Serrano, man, these girls need to fight her. If you're scared, go to church. Don't box, bro. If you're scared, take your ass to church. Don't box, because she deserves to continue to unify and continue to chase greatness. And if you're getting in the way of greatness by the way of ducking, then I ain't for that shit. So I want to see her get her shot to unify the whole division, become undisputed, because she can fight, fight, bro. She can fight, fight. So we got that one right as well. Now, this is the last one I want to talk about, because this is the one that um, I was really honestly most interested in, because to me, it was the true only 50-50 fight on the card, bro. It was the only fight where reasonable people, people that really study boxing, some could have picked Baranchek, some could have picked Montana Love, and you can make cases for why both of them would win, right? I picked Montana Love um, to get unanimous decision. I said he could possibly stop him late, which he ended up stopping Baranchek late, but um, and I was very impressed with the speed of Montana Love, his, his pop when he sits down on his punches. He got power, you ain't just walking through him. Um, and I was impressed with the heart of Baranchek coming back from that Zapata knockout to take some of the shots that he took, and he landed some good shots on Montana Love and hurt him as well. I felt like Montana Love um, got knocked down in the third round. The ropes held him up. Baranchek should have been awarded a knockdown in that third round when he had Montana Love against the ropes, and he um, and he really, really knocked them and knocked them through the ropes, bro. Damn to knock him through the ropes, but Montana Love showed speed, showed skill, um, showed some good power, and he showed that he got a chin, bro. He could take a pop at 140 pounds. Now, if he ever move up to 147, that's another question, but he can take punches from top of the top level, 140 pounders. You know what I mean? And so, I like all of that. I feel like he put on a very good performance. 
A very good performance. He got the W like we thought he would. But here are some things, and I don't mean to be hypercritical, but if anybody knows Montana Love, man, please tell the young brother, the young, the young brother out of Ohio, man, look, you can't be celebrating the shit in the middle of a fight, fam. You can't be losing focus. I felt like watching him with his skill level and his speed, he had to make mistakes for Baranchek to even hit him, bro. And every time he made a mistake, like getting his back up against the ropes, Baranchek hit him. Backing straight out, Baranchek hit him. Losing focus at the end of the fifth round. You know what I'm saying? Baranchek caught him with a perfect left hook looping where if Montana Love would have been disciplined, get his hand up after he threw that left hand because he threw a left hand straight, didn't get his hand, his right hand back up, Baranchek looped around, caught him right on the temple with a left hook, hurt his ass bad in the fifth round too. A lot of the times he got hurt or got hit in that fight, it was because of his own doing, not being focused, not being um, not being fully 100% locked in. I don't know if it was the hometown crowd there in Cleveland, Ohio, or whatever it was, but the young homie got to focus because he got the goods, bro. And he can really fight, but you can't be hitting dudes. Like, it was one point in the fight, he caught Baranchek with a good-ass shot, knocked him, you know, two or three steps back. I don't want to say halfway across the ring, but you could visibly see him hit the shit out of Baranchek. I believe it was either, um, I think it was with a left uppercut. Hit him. Baranchek took two, three, four steps back and was visibly hurt. And while he's visibly hurt, Montana Love got his hands up in the air like this, looking at the crowd, bro. You cannot do that shit, bro. You cannot do that shit on the world championship level, which I know is where you want to be based on your comments after the fight. And you got the skills to get there, young brother. You got them, bro. Speed, you got that. Heart, you got that. Chin, you got that. Skills, you got that. His right hook was working. Baranchek couldn't see that coming. When I was watching the fight, I was like, damn, this right hook about to end Baranchek. But it ended up being a left counter uppercut, which was timed perfectly. I mean, Montana Love can fight, bro. He got timing. He got speed. He got counter punching ability. He got a pretty good ring IQ when he's locked in. When he's locked in, he got a good ring IQ. And he can fight, bro. And he an absolute dog, and he got a chin on him. But you cannot make some of the mistakes that he made last night that he almost cost him a fight. It almost cost him a fight in the third round. And he was able to buckle down and come out in the sixth round and have a great round. But at the end of the fifth round, he damn near couldn't stand up. He couldn't walk, bro. Baranchek damn near knocked his whole head off his, off his body, bro. All because he wasn't focused, in my opinion. You got to finish all the way through to the bell, number one. And number two, when you in there, bro, really, like, fighting for your life. Like, this ain't no, this ain't, like, figurative language. This ain't hypothetical shit. You literally in that boxing ring fighting for your life. You could die, bro. You could die in that ring. You get hit with the wrong shot, it could be over for you. So when you in that position, you got to focus up, bro. You got to focus up. Everybody, especially, you know, Baran checked them looping ass punches. You know, we know what he do. You knew what he had to do coming in. He had to get a knockout. You know you got the better boxing skills. And when you were focused in, he was hitting the ropes and shit, bro. He was hitting the ropes and shit. Couldn't keep up with Montana Love. Couldn't lay a glove on. Montana Love had to make mistakes in order for himself to get hit. So I want to see in his next fight, 100% focus. All the way from bell to bell, and he a problem at 140 pounds, bro. Because regardless of what you say, he made it look easier than Josh Taylor made it look. He made it look easier than um than Zapata made it look. Like for real, for real, bro. Montana Love is a problem at 140 pounds, and he called out the right names. He said after that, give me Javante Davis or give me Josh Taylor, and I wouldn't be mad at either one of them fights. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Overall, great night of boxing. I enjoyed myself last night watching the card. Um, we went 5-0, so our record is now 92-18. and Because we got all five right this week. And we got to get eight more right without missing another one, bro. We're trying to get to at least to 100 before we miss another fight, bro. We're trying to get there. And we're going to do the whole Josh Warrington, Mauricio Laura card this week, man. It's going to be a fun card. It's a total of four fights. Um, There's some big fights and some big names on there. You got Conor Ben on that card. You got Katie Taylor on that card. And obviously, you got Mauricio Lara versus um, versus um, Josh Warren. And then also another fight on there, you got Giovanni Straffon versus, um, who the dude? Um, 
Damn, I forgot his name. It's the, it's the Brit dude. Um, damn, I can't remember his name. But that's going to be a good fight, too. So it's going to be a great card, bro. And I'm looking forward to predicting the whole card. So, yeah, I'll stay tuned for that as the week goes on. We'll drop those prediction videos. But overall, good good night for all the winners. Good night for your boy because we got them all right. And we on to the next, bro. But I appreciate everybody watching this video. Enjoy the rest of y'all day. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, hit that like button. Turn on your notification bell. And if you want me on the panel, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email. And our live show is this Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, episode number eight, man. You got knocked the F out, episode number eight. So y'all come through and hang out with your boy this Wednesday night. But I appreciate y'all watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And with that, we out, chill. Peace, y'all.